Hey, listen, or howdy, today we're making cowboy coffee here on Bean Basics. Oh, howdy. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Sagatuck, and welcome to the Ovis Lab. Hey, listen, today we're talking about cowboy coffee. And that's been a method of making coffee since the cowboys. And it's a rather rudimentary method of making coffee, but I just am finishing this pot up. And so I'm going to take it off the burner and set it right over here. And we're going to talk about why cowboy coffee works and why maybe it doesn't work. I'm going to just pour a little cold water down the spout a little cold water around the edge and we'll come back to this in just a little while. Well what I would say is that cowboy coffee is definitely a coffee that's not fussy. So uh, it takes no special equipment. You could do this in a in a coffee can. You could do this in this coffee pot here. Whatever sort of metal container you had you could do this in over a campfire. Uh, hikers use this, campers use this, and of course, cowboys use this, <laughs> all right? But we're gonna go over some of the principles because you know the unique thing about cowboy coffee is even though you pour grounds directly into it, when you pour it off, no grounds come. And part of that secret has to do with the cold water that I just poured on. But let me get started. I'm going to use a clear pot here to demonstrate how cowboy coffee works. And let me get some hot water already. Now, normally we would start it uh, from cold and bring it up to the boil, but we don't have all day to get it up to the boil. Oh, look at you. Yeah, I'm pouring <laughs> two cups at once. It's a magic trick. It is a it magic is. trick. Now, that'll end up being about 500 mils of water right there. And uh, I'm just glad that cup was there to save, save me from making a mess on the table. You know. <laughs> so, uh, and we're going to pretend this little hot plate's a, a campfire, okay, for just a minute. But the way we make cowboy coffee is we bring water to a near boil, and we grind some coffee, and we put it right in there. And then we wait for it to come to a boil for about three minutes. Uh, cowboy coffee ends up being something that's really smooth and easy to drink. But we're going to find out why in just a minute. Uh, Kent Rollins, uh, the guy that sort of made cowboy coffee famous, says for every quart of water, you should use about a quarter cup of coffee. And so we're going to look at that particular uh, ratio here um, and, and investigate that. But and the reason we're going to investigate it is it's going to be sort of the secret as to why this coffee is so smooth. All right? So I'm going to get a little coffee. I'm using Big B Best, which is one of our Farm Direct coffees. But the quarter cup line is just right there, which is about uh, maybe one and a half scoops. There we go. About one and a half scoops. And that one and a half scoops, the question is... <clears throat> Uh, how much coffee is that, right? So let me let me go ahead and weigh that out here. And that amount of coffee is, I have to tear this out, about 17 and a half grams. Now, if you think about it, 17 and a half grams, our normal coffee ratio, you know, we say for every liter, which would be this line right here, we should use 60 grams of coffee. Now we're using, where Cowboy Coffee says, for every quart, use three quarters of a cup. Three quarters of a cup is 17 grams. One quarter of a cup. One quarter of a cup. Thank you very much, right? So one quarter of a cup is 17 grams. This is about four times as less the amount of coffee than we would normally use in a cup of coffee. And that is part of the secret of cowboy coffee, right? And if you look at cowboy coffee, of course, they use some coffees that aren't 
that good. You know, I'm not going to say which canned brands those are, but they can be not that good. But we're going to use the recommended 17 grams. And I'm going to use this old grinder. Uh, and this old grinder came from an aunt of mine. This is actually uh, from Germany, but it kind of reminds me of a grinder you might have used, <laughs> you know, in, in like the 1800s or whatever. Out on the range. Out on the range. And by the way, it still works, but I'm going to, you know, not put us all through the misery of grinding coffee. I've already ground a batch of coffee. By the way, this grinder still works super fine. And we're just going to pour that coffee in and wait for it to come to the boil. I just want to notice how it's all kind of really just sitting up there on the top, right? It, definitely, right? So, you know, when we do a French press, you know, we put the grounds directly into the water too, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's an immersion method. And what always happens is the grounds float to the top. Now, in, in a French press, uh, the, the water's not boiling, right? And traditionally, we would never boil. We'd never continue to cook coffee. But the reason it kind of works out to just continuously cook this coffee is we're just not using that much coffee, right? So what we're doing is we're boiling the daylights out of this coffee, but we're not using so much coffee that it would make it bitter in the end. Now, Kent Rollins says that because when you boil it, it boils off all the acid. Well, I just don't think that that's true. I don't think you can boil off acid. The real secret to this is how weak the coffee is. But then the second secret is we do extract every possible component out of this coffee when we boil it, right? So uh, the instructions are to let that boil for, well, three or four minutes. And we're not gonna go that long. But again, if you, if you come in close, you can see that there's a definite sort of line of coffee grounds sitting on top right there, okay? Now I'm gonna pull this off and set it right here because those are always the instructions. Take it off the campfire and let it sit. And then uh, they always want you to pour some down the spout and then around the rim of the coffee pot. In this case, we don't have a spout, but we're gonna just go ahead and pour that cold water right on top. And this is the way that works. Yeah, I, I can see the grounds falling to the bottom. They absolutely fall to the bottom, yeah. right? And think about this, right? Heat rises and, of course, cool falls, right? So we have this boiling water, and then we add cold water to it, and it grabs all those solids on the way down, and it brings them right to the bottom. Now, you got to let your campfire coffee sit for a moment, and all that sedimentation will fall down. You know when we do a French press, that's true too, right? The longer we leave it, the more the sediments fall down. But when we add cold water, it accelerates that particular process. And frankly, it almost clarifies the coffee along the way, right? So what I'm gonna do is pour off a, a, a cup of this coffee right here. And we've got some foam, but what we have is no grounds. Okay, and all the grounds will stay behind in the pot. Now, the question is, how does it taste, hmm. right? So, babe, I'm going to pour you uh, a cup of coffee from, from the campfire pot. Yay. And you're going to tell me what you think of cowboy coffee. I think it actually doesn't taste bad at all. Look how clear that is. Mm-hmm. Right. And if I look at the bottom of the cup, I cannot see one ground in there. You take a look before you take a sip. Nope. Not one ground. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> what? It's way better than hotel coffee. It's way better than hotel <laughs> coffee. And so on that note, you know, we, we take our travel kettle almost everywhere we go. It's our Narita. And we have a segment on the travel kettle, and we'll put that up here because we use it for almost everything. But, you know, when you're in a hotel room, you can make cowboy coffee just using your electric kettle just like that, right? So if you forgot your pour over and you forgot your papers and you forgot your French press, but you had a pot, and you had some coffee and you had some water, you can make some cowboy coffee while you're out there on the trail. All right, 
Well, that's about all the time we have for. But if you have any comments, please put them down below. Maybe you'll give us a like. Maybe you'll give us a subscribe. Our mission, of course, is to get Big B Coffee to 100% farm direct by 2028 and 50% by 2023. We want to leave you with this one last note. And that is, when you love the world, the world will love you right back. Hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two Gs.